Hello. On behalf of the PC Global Network, I would like to welcome you to the recordings of LeaderCon 2024. Each year, we gather with pastors and leaders from the Praise Chapel family around the world and we worship together, fellowship together, pray and preach together. This year, our theme was loyalty. And it came from studying the word kesed in the Old Testament, which is impossible to easily translate into English. Two major pictures, though, are loyal and love. God is immensely, lovingly loyal to his people and to his plan on this earth. And we in Praise Chapel, we are counted among his people and we are partners in his plan. For us as leaders, the challenge put out is for us to remain lovingly loyal to God, to his purpose and plan for us, and also to each other in the body of Christ. We hope that you enjoy this teaching and I encourage you to watch the rest and allow this idea of loving loyalty to infect you as it has me. God bless you. That there's an area as we're talking about loyalty that I think sometimes is overlooked or maybe we could do a little better at. Um, and so I, I titled this message, Loyalty and Transition. Amen. As you guys know, transition is part of ministry. If there's no transition in your ministry, you're stuck. Amen. But whatever that transition may be, it may be um, being sent out to start a work, right? Church planning movement. You're, out, you're going out and planning a church. Maybe you're at that point where you're going to hand off your church to somebody else. And that can be a tough transition. Or maybe you're that other couple that's taking over the church. That's what we did. Amen. My pastor felt the call to Spain. And he said, hey, I want you to pray about taking over Pittsburgh, we're feeling God is, is calling us to Spain. I knew that meant I don't need to pray about it. God already spoke through my pastor. Amen. And so I knew that that was God calling me and my wife to take over. Um, but when he sent, uh, when he was sent out in essence and we prayed and released him, there were a lot of uh, opinions and advice given to us about how to do this transition. But, and, and we appreciated that, but we just wanted to trust the Lord with it. And so we kind of did things a little different than, than most people do. Uh, he had me take over the work in Pittsburgh and, and, um, all the Bay Area works that we do up there. That's what I oversee. And, and for me, that was a great responsibility because Pittsburgh is the backbone of everything that we do even internationally under Pastor Ralph. And so there was a, a responsibility. There was a, a little bit of pressure. Amen. But what I realized is that I wanted to remain loyal to my pastor, that I wanted to remain loyal to the vision that God had given him for Pittsburgh. And so, um, you know, some people sometimes feel this need for independence. This is my opportunity to shine. This is my opportunity to make a name for myself. And I struggled with that mindset. You know, I, I see that in the world. I grew up, my dad had a pizza parlor franchise and it would be doing good and, and he'd have somebody open up another one and they all just had to reinvent the wheel and watch it fail. And so we bring that mentality into the church sometimes. And, and I look at my pastor and even when we talk about this theme of loyalty, I was studying the word, right, that, um, that we find in, in Hebrew and, um, and it really was talking about God's loyalty to us primarily or people's loyalty to one another, but it was usually coming downward. When we think about loyalty, we think about being loyal upward. We think about being loyal to God, loyal to a pastor, but my pastor was loyal to me. My pastor invested in me. My pastor went when I was going through all kinds of child custody things to court with me every time. My pastor was there when I was broken. And when my pastor left to Spain, guess what? He was still loyal to me. That didn't change. And you know, I didn't want to turn around and say, I got to make this my own. I was reading, um, you know, just about Joshua and Moses. And, and you never, you see Joshua going up the mountain with Moses. You see Joshua at the tabernacle with Moses. You see Joshua, one of the only ones believing of the vision that God gave Moses to take the land. He's one of only two, right? That he grabbed a hold of that vision. And so when Moses passes away and hands it off to Joshua, you don't see Joshua all of a sudden say, I know Moses did some great things, but it's Joshua's time now. Let's stop talking about Moses, guys. I'm the one going in and taking the land. Why? Because it wasn't Moses and it wasn't Joshua. It was always God. We're just vessels. And if the vessel is just a source that God is using, then why the need to change everything? Why the need to, to shift everything? 
And I believe it was the same even with, with my pastor. Man, I didn't need to change everything. I believed in the vision under my pastor, so why would the vision change? Our vision was simple. Win, build, send. That vision birthed our ministry. That bit vision built our ministry. And that vision is still doing the same today. Why change it? I don't need to get all fancy. I didn't need to go, okay, it's time. You know, I, I wouldn't say, hey, the younger generation showed up because my pastor's like a year older than me. But it wasn't like, it's, sometimes you see that younger generation, we got to reach the younger crowd. So now it's time to bring out the lights and the smoke machines and all these things. And if you have that in your church, no big deal. But we didn't. And God was moving. So why do we got to bring it in? We didn't have to change everything. Now, for me, though, unlike Joshua, I still have my pastor, right? My discipler. I have never felt the need to detach from that relationship. I've never thought I've outgrown it. We have to be careful our mentality. But see, my pastor also wasn't trying to do certain things or control certain things. And, and there were just advice given that, hey, you need to fully release it to Scott. You just need to, to let it go. And, and I didn't feel I had to take ownership of it. I didn't feel like Pastor Ralph all of a sudden has no say in our church. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't look at it that way. Romans 12, 3 through 5 in the Amplified says, For by grace, by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think. Right but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has appointed to each a degree of faith and a purpose designed for service. For just as in one physical body, we have many parts and these parts do not all have the same function or special use. So we who are many are nevertheless just one body in Christ, still the same vessel. And individually, we are parts of one another, mutually dependent on each other. I look at that as that, mutually loyal to one another. My pastor told me early on that the Lord confronted him with a saying, are you building your ministry or mine? Amen. I took that to heart. That hasn't changed. I've always been seeking to expand his kingdom. Right. It isn't my, God, my, my church, it's my God's church. And, and I, don't, I don't ever want to say that like loosely or it's just some kind of Christianese because that's the good thing to say, right? It's God's church. But you're over there like, <laughs> notice me. And so again, in that, then why do I need to make a change? Why do I need to shift everything? It, I, I'm just the next vessel that God's already doing. You know, I felt like, man, what a setup for Pastor Larry's message last night. I'm like, God, you just kind of gave me a layup. Like, seriously, because... He was just sharing, you know, we think we have to do this next thing, this next thing. It's not about us. It's never been about us. It's, that's, that's our loyalty to him is just say, it ain't about me. I'm surrendered. I'm humble. I can't do this without you. I'm not anything. Man, I don't deserve to be here. I haven't earned it. God did it in spite of me, not because of me. In, in spite of my failures, that my pastor showed loyal to me and overlooked and said, you know what, that's okay, get up, move forward. My pastor continued to be loyal to me and say, there's still a call of God on your life. My pastor would say to me, if I've forgiven you, how much more has God? If I'm proud of you, how much more is God? He continued to show that loyalty to me and it stuck. Now, don't get me wrong, there might have to be changes in the house if you took over because of a sin issue or something was wrong, but if we're going to be honest with ourselves, very rarely is that why we had to take over a ministry or that's why we got sent out. You didn't get sent out because somebody sinned. So when we get sent out, are you carrying the vision that God has given you through your pastor? Or are you like, this is my time to shine? You're, you're almost competing with your pastor if you'd admit it. See, my pastor isn't threatened by any success in me. He, he told me just recently, he goes, I want you to succeed. Other than God, I'm your biggest fan. I want you to continue to go forward. Amen. That's how we are with our kids, right? We want them to outdo us. Why would we be different with believers, spiritual children? Amen. We want to see them succeed. And so really for me, it just came down to one thing. Drop the ego. Get rid of the pride. 
Because the only reason you're trying to make a name for yourself is you have an ego or you're trying to prove yourself. That's not your job. If God called you, then all we have to do is remain humble, remain loyal to him. Seek to, to expand God's kingdom. Put down that selfish ambition. I, what, what we in our ministry really fought for was more important than any kind of selfish ambition, ego, all that, is unity and being a church in one accord. But when I say a church in one accord, I don't mean Pittsburgh. I mean Pittsburgh with our pastor, Pittsburgh with Praise Chapel. We want to continue to be in one accord because there's power in that unity. There's power when we come together. Amen? It's not about me. As a matter of fact, as great as a pastor that I have, and I love him to death, he's my closest friend outside of my wife. Amen. Because <laughs> I go home with her tonight. Pastor Ralph's in Spain, praise the Lord. But at the same time, it's never been about Pastor Ralph. It's always been about God. Like I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't earn this. And I sure as heck didn't deserve it. But God did it anyways. My biggest part that I would say, we find it in 2 Timothy 2. It says, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. I look at that word as faith, faithful, that trustworthy, loyal, that, that, you know, I came alongside my pastor and I wasn't like, oh, I got your back, pastor, all oh, this. No, I just did it. And that my only part was remaining faithful. Even in failure, get up, move forward, because, because I want to help my pastor. I want to be by his side. I believe what God is speaking through him. I believe what God is doing through him. I've watched God perform miracles through this man. I've watched favor on his life, and I'm going to stick by that. And when he went to Spain, I'm going to continue that as an extension of what God is doing through our ministry. See, I still, I still call my pastor. I still seek counsel regularly, wisdom regularly from him. He still is my pastor. He's still called to look out for my soul. That never changed for me. I even update him with what's happening in the church regularly. We, we stay in lockstep. I wanna say this, this might make people feel uncomfortable. I don't make all the church decisions financially. I still talk with my pastor. Now, some people would have been like, you got to release the bank accounts. You got to hand it to Pittsburgh. And to the no, no, no. It ain't my money. It ain't Pastor Ralph's money. It's always been God's money. So why wouldn't we want to stay in one accord, especially if we're trying to, to be a church that's locally based and trying to win the bay for Jesus while also being worldly minded that we're trying to reach the entire world. We're trying to be an international church. Then why would I always, oh, this money's for Pittsburgh, Pastor Ralph. You're going to have to figure out Spain. We'll support, but you got to figure it out. No, we fully fund Spain. We fund our work in Estonia. We, 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 it's not, again, it's not our money. And we talk about that. If he says, hey, we need to do this, I go, okay. I don't go, well, let me pray on it, Pastor Ralph, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> that, that's never happened, amen? When he tells me to pray about it, I'm already like, you already spoke. Did, did, did the Israelites go, hey, Moses, I know that, that you're speaking to us, but we want to hear it from God ourselves. Or does God still speak through people? You know, I would, I want to share a couple of things. I wish Pastor Ralph was here so that he could share his side of the coin. But one of the things that I think he would impart if you're in that place where you're going to hand off a ministry or it's that season of transition is he taught me to invest time in, in, in communication and building that relationship, that one-on-one, -on -one, that he can impart that to somebody who, who is faithful. You know, sometimes we look too much at the gifting. And I would say, no, look at the faithfulness. God's in control of the gifting anyways. This one could look like, man, he can't, he can't preach nearly like that one. Hmm, that one draws a crowd, but this one's faithful. God will use that one far more than the one who can bring in a crowd. Amen. He imparted his heart into me. He shared his life with me. The reason that our church travels deep to conferences, you know, we were just sharing it. We went to Huntington Park Conference last year and brought like 80 people because that's what Pastor Ralph did. It didn't change, that's who he is, so that's who we are. 
My pastor always said unity doesn't happen by accident. You have to be intentional. You have to make investments. And if you want to keep a, a unity, keep a loyalty in the church, and you expect that when you hand it off or, or you go out, you know, uh, our, our brother came up here to, to speak and, and he's loyal. Man, this brother has my back. But he doesn't have it in word. He shows up. And I look at that and I'm like, man, what a blessing, not for me, but for you when you get sent out. And that's what Pastor Ralph would always say to me when, when things started happening in our church. He goes, man, that blesses my heart because you were that for me. That loyalty is seeds. Amen? But my pastor also doesn't lead with a heavy hand. He doesn't micromanage. See, he's, he's the pastor of our fellowship of churches. And for me, that doesn't change. We like to mess with him and call him Apostle Ralph, but he hates it, so, you know. <laughs> But one of his core principles that he taught us is freedom with accountability. Just tell me what's going on. You have all the freedom in the, in the world there. When people that have relationship with him still call him today, because right, they didn't, he didn't stop being their pastor. They had a relationship when he left. They call him, when they start asking for advice or direction, you know what he says? You should really talk to Pastor Scott about this. Because until he talks to me, he doesn't wanna give room for the enemy to bring division between me and him. My wife and I always, man, if I haven't talked to him for a week or two, we start, now nah, we got we to gotta at least get on the phone. We got we to gotta have a conversation because the enemy wants to divide us. Because if he can divide us, he can shake up everything that God's doing. We're not going to give place to that. We got to remain loyal to the vision. And that vision requires unity between the two of us. But he made it clear also who was directly in charge in Pittsburgh. Not because that was for me, but that was for the congregation. Numbers 27, 22, and 23 says, So Moses did as the Lord commanded. He presented Joshua to Eleazar, the priest, and the whole community. Moses laid his hands on him and commissioned him to lead the people just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. So see, when our pastor was getting ready to be sent out, we laid hands on him to release him, and he turned around and laid hands on us for the anointing for the house. It was clear what was happening, and our people knew. Did some people leave? Yeah. But did we change the heart of our church? No. Did some of the personality change in the church? Yeah. We don't do as many rap events anymore. Just, I'm trying to bring in some country, but they just didn't have it. I don't know. So. So your personality, see, what, what I feel is, God placed a vision in Pittsburgh and did things through Pastor Ralph. Then God brings me in to take over and do those things as much as I'm taking over. The only thing I should be doing is adding to what God is doing, not changing it all. You know, I, I heard the comments, and again, I, I appreciate all feedback. I, I look up to so many pastors in this room and, and pastors that have imparted into my life. But, and I know some things are said from experience and so forth, but it was like, well, don't start anything for so long because it takes so many years for transition and this and that change. I didn't feel that way. We just kind of flowed because we weren't trying to change anything. I didn't have to shake up all the leaders. I didn't have to, ch God changed any leaders he needed to, but I didn't have anything to do with it. I just submitted it to God because I stayed loyal to what God, God had established through my pastor and I believed in it. And I think that we really need to focus on doing better at transition, right? There's been a lot of transition in churches, even in Praise Chapel. In the, in the north, like, man, almost every church transferred over. And some were harder than others. But I think that if there's a, uh, a focused investment in that unity and a, a mentality that, no, we're staying in relationship. This hasn't changed anything. Then we can stop wasting time transitioning and just go forward. Amen? You know, as you read another great uh, relationship we see in scripture is Paul and Timothy, and, you, and, and I'm reading through the letters written to Timothy, and I don't see this, this power struggle going on. I just see Paul just wanting Timothy to succeed and loving on Timothy, and I don't see Timothy being like, oh, I got this, I got this. But it just seems like it's embraced, like from a father figure. And shouldn't we keep that mentality? Man, if I was getting sent out, or when we, we talk about sending anybody out, and I want that relationship first. Because I have heard comments like this. Oh, you know, if I'm going to take over the church, I'm gonna, I don't want to just be a figurehead. In other words, I want to have the power. 
I don't need that. I don't want any power. That's his. <laughs> Amen? Amen? If I get the power, then I'm also responsible for it, and I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I just want to kind of end with this, is, again, why do, I, why do we fall into that trap? It's ego. It's pride. Right. My biggest hope from anything that I say is it isn't about you. It kind of was what Pastor Larry was saying yesterday. It's not about us. We're just called to be faithful and surrendered and do our part while we're here, and then it will be handed on to the next. And if they have that mentality, it will continue for generations as long as the Lord tarries. We just want to be faithful, as we heard too, to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. The ministry that God gives us is never about us. And when it's going well or it's not, unless you're in sin, you just keep going the course. If God doesn't change, and only the vessel does, then the vision doesn't have to change, the loyalty doesn't have to change, the heart of the ministry doesn't have to change. And I would say this too, if maybe you already went through transition and you didn't do a good job with it, try and repair those relationships. Because there will be far more power if you link arms again, accomplish things around the world, support one another. Amen? because I don't know about you, but that's, that's my, my biggest desire, is I just want to expand God's kingdom. Right. If I need to get more out of the way and somebody takes over, so be it. But I just want to see people saved. I want to see people discipled. I want to see church, churches planted. Amen. That's what, we're, that's what we're all about. Amen. And so with that, you know, if you have questions for me too, I know some people have asked me, because we did it weird. Ask me. I'll share. God gave a great plan to my pastor, and I believe that we're seeing the fruit of that today. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. Well, thank you for watching this video from LeaderCon 2024. And if this video ministered to you, this message did, then I would ask you to, to leave a comment, like this video, leave a review of PC Global. I would ask you to also follow us on social media. Go to Facebook, go to Instagram, go to LinkedIn, go to X and follow us, comment, engage with us. The more that we're engaged together online, the more of an impact that we have on social media and the more opportunities for other people to discover the opportunities to partner together in the kingdom of God that they may not already know about. I would also challenge you to go to pcglobalnetwork.com and support missions together with us around the world. The things that we accomplish together far out surpass the things that we can do alone. And so continue to support us, continue to follow us, continue to engage with us online, and God bless you.